All right guys, today we're gonna to be going through and re-threading the cylinder head stud holes in this aluminum block. Now this is gonna be specific to the 4B11, but it'll be the same general idea across any block that you have. I did find this company, which I will go ahead and link down below that sells engine specific kits. So what we're going to be doing is drilling and tapping the block and we will be inserting this giant threaded steel, pretty much a time insert into the aluminum block. Now this is pretty common on these 4B11s, Evo 10 engine block at high boost levels, high power levels. You can see this hole right here, this stud just keeps trying to tighten and tighten forever with no end in sight. So let's go ahead and fix that. I bought this kit from a company called Hun Solutions. I may be pronouncing that wrong. This is the NS300L kit designed specifically for the 4B11 with ARP head studs. So everything included in the kit, it's quite a bit of stuff. It's a complete kit, everything you need minus a drill and a way to drive in the tap. So let's run through everything that's included in the kit. We've got thread locker. This is a depth gauge to check the depth of the insert. These are the steel inserts, which your head studs or head bolts will thread into. This is the tool to thread in the insert into the block. Now we have a drill bit, two different taps, drill and tap alignment jig. This is the drill guide bushing. This one being the tap bushing, head bolt spacer. I'll show you guys what this does later on. And this here is the hole alignment pin. And they were nice enough to include some tap magic this is just tap and drill cutting fluid. There is a full set of instructions included, universal instructions, pretty much good across all the kits. And then the 4B11 Mitsubishi Evo specific kit. This is important for the depths of the drill and the depths of the tap, also the depths of the insert. Now, if we wanted to be lazy, we could probably get away with just re-threading the one single hole that is stripped. Now the problem with that is once that hole is re-threaded with the insert, what about the other nine holes? If we go to make another 50 pounds of boost on this car, it's most certainly eventually going to pull threads on another hole. There's 10 holes on this block. It will not take all that much time to re-thread all of these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it right the first time. This thing is torn down to a bare block, bare block. No crank, no rods, no rotating assembly whatsoever. You could probably do this while it's in the car, but there's gonna be a ton of aluminum shavings from drilling and cutting the new threads. So I opted to just pull the motor out of the car, tear it all the way down, because I'll show you guys at the end of this, there's gonna be a lot of, a lot of shavings. Let's start out with re-threading this hole right here. So I'm gonna take a stud and thread her in to a hole that's close to this hole here. Go ahead and grab the alignment jig and the drill guide bushing. Drill guide bushing goes in like so. Make sure it's seated all the way. Tighten down this thumb screw right here. Grab your alignment pin. This is very, very important. Alignment pin goes in and we're gonna hold pressure on this alignment pin as we tighten down the nut for the stud. That will keep this jig, this aluminum block in place so when we're drilling and tapping, it's a perfectly centered hole with the block. Now that is where this guy comes into play. As you can see, if we went ahead and tried to tighten down this block without the spacer, it'd flop around. So put the spacer on, install your nut. And as you tighten down that nut, make sure you're holding pressure on this alignment pin to keep everything in place. You don't need to go crazy tight with that nut. Go ahead and pull out the alignment pin. And now the scary part, we're gonna go ahead and drill into the block. Now specifically on the 4B11, you want that hole to be 99 millimeters deep. So I have my calipers set here at 99 millimeters and we need a measure from right here, not the tip of the drill because that's not drilling it to the proper diameter, but from this tip right here, measure all the way down and put a mark on the drill bit. So from this tip right here to that mark, is exactly 99 millimeters. Grab some of our cutting fluid, lather up that drill bit. I'm gonna put the drill on a slow drill setting and it should be a tight fit into that drill guide bushing. Slowly but surely, we are gonna go ahead and drill out this hole. You guys see the amount of shavings that comes out of this thing.
Now after you get that hole decently deep, you can go ahead and remove your jig. Get it out of the way. Now with the jig out of the way, we can drill this hole to that 99 millimeter depth. You cannot get that depth with the jig in the way. Now it is very important that you do not go past that 99 millimeters, otherwise you will hit the oil passages and you'll have oil getting into your head studs, which is not a good, not a good time whatsoever. Now we need to go ahead and clean out that hole, get all of the aluminum shavings out. I'm gonna use compressed air. If you're gonna use compressed air, make sure you're wearing protection. You can also use like a mini vac, something along those lines. Okay, with that hole drilled to 99 millimeters deep, now it is time to tap it. So we need to go ahead and get the hole centered again. We're gonna insert the drill guide bushing in place and then grab our alignment dowel. And with that hole drilled, the alignment dowel will fit perfectly inside that hole. Pull out the alignment dowel and the drill guide bushing. And now we're going to install this here. This is the tap guide bushing. Get that in place, tighten that thumb nut. Now we have two different taps. Both are 5 8 11. One is a three inch and one is this probably five and a half, six inch tap. We're gonna tap as much of this hole as we can with the shorter one. Being that it's shorter, it is stronger. And then we will tap it to depth with the extended tap. We drilled the hole 99 millimeters deep, but we want to tap the hole 92 millimeters deep. Grab some of our cutting lube, put on these threads, insert the tap. Should be a nice tight fit inside that guide. And to drive the tap in, I'll be using a 12 point 11 millimeter socket. So I have this hole tapped as deep as I can go with the shorter tap. I'm gonna completely remove the jig. Now we can finish cutting the threads to the proper depth. I do have this tap marked as well to that 92 millimeter depth. Every few cuts, every few revolutions, pull the tap, get out the aluminum shavings and continue cutting. Okay, this hole right here should be ready for its insert. Now here's what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead, blow out that hole with compressed air and thread in an insert and make sure it goes to the proper depth. So here is the insert. Here's the insert tool. And you can see it kind of grabs right onto that flat head edge. That insert is in as far as it'll go. Now I'm gonna grab this depth gauge, insert it into the hole, Press it all the way down, pull it out. Now we are right at four, just over 47 millimeters, 47 and a half. That is exactly what we want, perfect depth. But now we need to go ahead and pull the insert back out because it does need to be Loctited in place. So they include this high temp red Loctite. And they say to apply some in the hole, about a half inch down, you don't need a ton. And we're also gonna apply a little bit on this insert. That's quite a bit, but of course, the last thing we want is these inserts ever backing out. One more check with the depth gauge, just to make sure it's seated all the way. Technically, that hole would be done if this block was not sleeved. Now, I was not going to discuss this part just because a lot of people, the majority of people will not run into this problem. Now, this is a sleeved 4B11, meaning all these guys right here are replaced with an aftermarket set of sleeves. Now, when they cut the block to install the sleeves, they get awfully close to these head stud holes. Now, when we go ahead and drill it out and tap it, a few of these holes, unfortunately now, are going to have coolant around the sleeves here is where the coolant sits, and you can see how close it is from the hole. Now, it's not all of them, but I am going to go ahead and do this on all of the holes. Now, this is kind of a toss-up whether it's going to be an effective fix or not, but it's the best idea that I have. So these are another set of inserts, but they're not threaded on the inside 
for the head studs. We're gonna be installing these on top of the inserts we just put in the block. So the head stud is going to pass through the first insert and thread into the second insert. And the only thing we are installing this for is so that it blocks that coolant from the coolant chamber from entering the head stud threaded area. Now, of course, we can't just install this with nothing on it. So my best idea is to grab some thread tape, wrap this thing up nice and tightly with thread tape, go ahead and insert it into that hole. And hopefully, 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 that will block the coolant from entering the head stud hole. So I got the drilled out insert all wrapped up. Let's hope this actually helps and fixes the problem that we would have had if we did not install these. All finished up, it should be looking something like that. Of course, the head of it cannot be poking out above the block, but if you insert, but if you install the actual bottom threaded insert properly and deep enough, that is how it should look, just like that. Now I have no doubt in my mind, we'll ever pull the threads, or I guess the inserts out of this block again. That second insert, it's a little bit doubtful in my mind whether or not it's gonna work. So that is a 100% do at your own risk type of ordeal. Once again, if you don't have a sleeved 4B11, you will not run into that problem. The kit that I used, I'll go ahead and link down below. Hopefully this video helps you guys out if you ever pull the threads on your aluminum block. I figured I'd show you guys this as well. This is all of the metal shavings from drilling and tapping those holes. That would be a lot to manage while the motor's complete and in the car.